the relationship between Beijing and the Taliban is the latest example of a neo-colonialism, an exploitive foreign policy emanated from, emanating from the Chinese Communist Party in Beijing that aims to take advantage of any country and any leader gullible enough to accept their promises, uh, which are almost never fulfilled. In the U.S. Commission for International Religious Freedom, in our annual report, I added a comment at the end of the, uh, end of the chapter on, on, on China. And, and in my comment, the point I was making was a warning to all of these countries you know, around the world uh, that are taking humanitarian uh, propaganda you know, from the Communist Party attached to the Belt and Road Initiative, that we just want to help you. But again and again and again, every country around the world that have chosen you know, to engage in this game have found themselves regretting it. That's why there are unfinished bridges and roads all over the world. Take what happened between Gaza and, and Israel you know, earlier this year, uh, where the Communist Party was trying to, uh, through their propaganda arms and publications all over the Middle East and, and around the world, uh, was trying to exploit the divide between Israelis and Palestinians. Um, uh, spokespersons for the foreign ministry of China and, and in embassies all around the world uh, were publishing publishing articles, uh, and and in those articles and in those editorials, you know, they were they were aligning themselves with the Palestinian cause, which of course was a grand effort to cover up what they're doing to the Muslim minority in their own country. But in the end, uh, if they fulfilled the promise, uh, and I'm not sure whether they did or not, uh, the, the CCP gave a million dollars you know, a a afterwards to, you know, provide support for the, for the Palestinian cause. What they do is they exploit vulnerable countries through leaders in order to advance their agenda. And what's happening around the world slowly and what the Taliban will learn and what Pakistan will learn and some of these other countries that have chosen to go down this path is what the Chinese people long ago learned but aren't allowed to say, which is that the first victim of the worst vices of the Communist Party are its own people, the Chinese people. And for all of those countries around the world that the Communists are attempting to colonize with a new colonialism are gonna learn the same lessons. And when it comes to the Taliban, it's really simple. Number one, they want to uh, exploit the current situation in order to uh, diminish the prestige of the United States of America. Number two, they share a small border with Afghanistan and Xinjiang, and they want to they want to cut a deal with the Taliban to ensure the movement across that border uh, is under their control. Number three, maybe later on, they might have interest in a trillion dollars of rare earth minerals in in Afghanistan. Number four, they're creating a new axis of of collaborators against the Western democratic order. You know, while we're sitting here talking, um, you know the talking points coming out of Beijing are about undermining democracy. Right? So, so what, what the Communist Party is, is attempting to do is they're saying that what's happening in Afghanistan uh, is an indication of, number one, you can't rely on the Americans, number two, uh, the failure of democracy. Democracy doesn't work. And they're trying to redefine democracy and, and actually allege that they have democracy, you know, a Chinese democracy versus an American democracy. But what they don't have is what we're seeing now which is American soldiers risking their lives in inhospitable and difficult situations, perhaps without even uh, sufficient orders to fully do their job because of, of political dynamics in the United States, being willing to die at that airport to save one baby handed over a wall. Because democracy is not about casting ballots in ballot boxes. Democracy is about a set of values that says that every single human being is important. Whatever their ethnicity, whatever their religion, whatever their politics, whether you disagree or don't disagree, this is the secret sauce of democracy. And what will happen, as has happened again and again in the United States, is even in this difficult moment in our country, we will emerge stronger. It will happen. And unfortunately, around the world, the cheap assistance 
of a communist regime that is only interested in their own power, not those they're allegedly trying to help, is robbing from the people of all these other countries their opportunities. Afghanistan is losing some of its best and brightest and most brilliant people on those airplanes. It's great history in that part of the world. It's heritage. People leaving. And they're leaving partially because whatever was said in that conversation a month ago in Beijing, who knows what was said. But, but apparently it's clear, clear to the Taliban that they would not be standing alone if they ended up in charge of Afghanistan again. And the people of Afghanistan will suffer in the way the people of China suffer in Tibet, in Xinjiang, the evangelical Christians, all over the country, and the Falun Gong practitioners, the people will suffer. And, that, and that's the tragedy. And Americans need to like wake up, dust ourselves off. We took a bruising in the last week, regroup, and remind ourselves that, that these values that have made us the most powerful, but truly benevolent country in human history are strong enough to see us through this, this uh, un unfortunate hour.